Hey, what's up, Street Talks? This is Eric from the Eric from Street Photography Blog. Currently here in Bangkok for my first time for the Monogram Asia 8x8 Street Photography event. So I just wanted to give you a quick tour of this awesome building in this place I'm here. Hello. Hey, Eric. How you doing? Good morning, brother. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing a, I'm doing a tour of the place. Oh, cool. Oh, actually, cool. before I do that, yeah. um, who are you? Uh, Sheldon Serkin. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, tell us about yourself, Sheldon. Well, I'm uh, from New York. I live in Brooklyn. Uh, here to give a talk on shooting in the zone. Oh, okay. And to enjoy and explore Bangkok with uh, participants and, uh, you know, for myself. Sweet. So, how do you get in the zone when shooting street photography, uh, Brendan? <laughs> Sheldon. Sheldon, sorry, right, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting the two white guys confused. Yeah, there's two uh, of so us. So, Sheldon, um, how do you get in the zone when you're shooting street photography? Uh, there's, uh, it's, I think it's different for everybody. I think for myself, I know it works best for myself. For myself, the number one, I'll skip to the, I'll skip to the, the big end. Yeah, yeah. The number one thing for myself is a deadline or pressure, which I've realized has really helped me overcome any kind of fears or trepidations I have in, in, in shooting or approaching subjects and just getting the shot is the number one cons uh, consideration. So that's what I do. Um, How about for you? For me? Yeah. Well, let's, let's sit down and we'll <laughs> chat. Did you get the coffee in the room or? In the room, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh God, I need some yeah. coffee right now. Uh, so Sheldon, for yeah. me, getting in the zone is turning off distractions. So you listen to music? No. That's a distraction to you. Yeah. So what kind of? So At least, just tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, so for me, my biggest source of distraction is my phone. Uh -huh. So I just turn off my phone when I'm shooting. Smart. Uh, smart. Smart phone. <laughs> you, li you like what I did there? Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good um, one. And I mean, a lot of it too is just getting rid of uh, negative mental energy too. So for me. Like not worrying about money, paying mm -hmm. the rent, mm -hmm. you know, bullshit. I'm dealing with like family drama or anything like that. And so for me, like getting in the zone means almost kind of shutting off my brain. That's interesting. And it takes me about maybe like 30 minutes to 40, 50 minutes before I really get in the zone. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of funny because yeah. I like to shoot street photography with other people too. But at the same time, I like to shoot solo. I think I have more fun when I'm shooting with other people, yep. but I'm probably making better photos when I'm shooting alone. I am. I feel exactly the same way, Eric. Although, uh, when I'm in, if I'm shooting for a long period of time, being with people, of course, helps break that monotony and also keeps your energy up, mm -hmm. uh, keeps you focused. Yep. Um, it depends on the people you're shooting with. If you're shooting with people who are there to shoot, great. If you're shooting with people who are there to hang out and socialize, you might want to try shooting alone. And uh, uh, Sheldon, for your street photography, what do yeah. you shoot mostly with? With iPhone 7. Uh, hold up your iPhone 7. This is it. So, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Okay. Sheldon, why don't you shoot with a real camera? <laughs> the iPhone well, is... Why do, you, why do you shoot with an iPhone? Okay. So, uh, the iPhone is a real camera. Um, I'm uh, notoriously, aver notoriously averse to tech. Not a tech guy, not a gear guy. I like to just get in and get the shot. Uh, the iPhone lets me do that with the minimal fuss, minimal fuss. Um, I can't really be, uh, I'm not honestly truly interested in the tech aspect of photography. I'm interested uh, in the capturing the moment or the character in street photography. That's my number one goal. What moment do you want to capture? Uh, a, a moment that speaks to me. A moment that has some kind of meaning for me. Although, much like you say, shutting your brain off, I don't, I don't analyze it in the moment. Of it. It's best to work on instinct, intuition. How do you know which are your best photos? Great question. Uh, I think I know what the best photo is the day I shoot it. Uh, of course, months later, I have a different opinion when I go back and look. Uh, when I forget the, when I forget the circumstances of having taken the shot, the best photo on the day of is the shot I think I got, which is closest to the one I envisioned when I took it. But I realize accidents play a major, major role. Um, images or, or items, juxtapositions in the frame uh, that I don't notice when shooting kind of come to the fore months later when you're looking at photos. So I like, to, I like to think that it takes up to six months to really identify on a specific day which photo is your best photo. Uh, do you find it hard with Instagram where there's so much pressure to constantly upload <laughs> photos all the time? Yes, I do. So how do you integrate Instagram, social media, into your photography life and workflow or whatnot. Like, what is your philosophy on that? Because mm. you just said that like, it is true that it might take you six months to really like, realize yeah. whether your photo is good or not, yeah. but let's say you shoot the photo and you upload the day of. Yeah. Um, 
So, what does that mean to you? Instantaneous gratification of sharing it quickly versus sitting on the photo, or do you do you just prefer I, what you're doing right now? You, I, do, you, do you know what I'm getting at? I know. I understand what you're saying. Okay. I think the instantaneous gratification of the feedback, the instant feedback from around the world, as soon as you post a photo, is um, you can't deny it. It can't be denied. You know, it's uh, and it does work against. You're remaining focused on your photography. You're remaining focused on when you're out in the streets. But I think that uh, I think you have to find a balance for yourself. What what I'm doing now works for me on the, for the most part. So I just like. like so how do you balance it? <laughs> I try to. Um, how do I balance it? That's a good question. If I'm excited about a shot, I want to share it. So if, if I'm excited in the moment, I share it. Um, if I'm not excited about a shot, I won't share it in, until I until I am excited about that one shot. Of course, like I said, not the best shot, but that shot at that moment, I'll share that shot. You know, I've been thinking actually a lot yeah. about what, what photos are worth sharing or not. Yeah. I think, Sheldon, that's probably the best definition or best idea is you should only share photos you're excited about. Because often, yeah. uh, I know this has happened to me in the past, is that... Yeah. I'm not excited about my shots, but I'm sharing it for the sake of sharing yeah, it. Yeah. Or I'm sharing it because I'm forget like, oh, what my Instagram followers and my yeah. Facebook followers will forget about yeah. me. And so it's more about... Or you get a sense of what will get a better reaction. Yep. I always find that the shots that, um, that I like the most get the least reaction. Why is that? I don't know. I, it's a mystery to me. Um, if I shoot a silhouette or a, a stride by, great reaction. If I shoot... What's a, what's a stride by? A uh, stride by is a, you know, you... You stand, uh, you have a backdrop, an urban backdrop like this one, and yeah. you wait here for someone interesting to walk by or a couple of people interested to walk by and you take that shot. So the environment becomes the subject, not the people. And mm. I'm much more interested in the people. Uh, what kind of people are you interested in? Um, unique people. Uh -huh. Hi. How you doing? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. I, unique people, people uh -huh. who, uh, who don't seem like uh, all of the others or someone who seems to be going through a, a personal crisis or a or having a, a, a thought, and that thought is, is kind of being communicated by their face, by their stature, by the way they move. Um, can you show us how to shoot street photography on iPhone? <laughs> it's it's not that hard. All right, so okay, so, okay, so let me let me see if this is good. Okay, okay so, so we got. Uh, so you you turn on your phone. Yeah, turn it uh -huh. on. Yep. Yeah. Okay, got the app, the native camera app. Okay. Uh, you've got a lot of choices, but of course I just shoot for, uh, photo. Yep. And I've just started shooting with the native camera app recently. Why is that? Uh, because I didn't like it before, but now it, uh, with the 7 Plus, it's improved to a degree that it's, um, it works well. The design team has done a great job. Yeah, they've done a great job. So you just, uh, you know, you can form it up like that. Uh -huh. we got a stride by coming. Oh, uh, okay. No, no stride by. Like this. I like, to, I like a, a square frame, but I'll shoot and use this kind of like, kind of like a range frame. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So when do you shoot horizontal versus uh, vertical? When I want to see a more de defined square. Oh, interesting. When I'm shooting on the street in a wider area, I'll shoot like this. Yep. So that I can see what's coming on both sides. How do you make sure your, your camera doesn't drop? Just hold it tight. <laughs> I know Brendan has a uh, has a, a wrist strap. Yep. But I just hold it tight. Oh, okay. And can switch like this. Uh huh. Wish we had some people. That's okay. We could imagine. Yeah. Okay, oh, here comes somebody. Here comes somebody coming from this end, and you just uh, snap it. And snap uh, it. after you, when you see a good scene, how many photos do you shoot? I'll shoot ma as many as possible. I don't, well, like, I don't like to use the burst mode like that. You see, yeah. it's took, okay. took 22 photos of nothing. Oh, shit. But I'll shoot like this. Why? I'll have in mind the ideal frame, yeah. and then I'll try to bracket it. So I'll shoot. So if the person's coming this way, I'll uh -huh. shoot before they reach the ideal place in the uh -huh. frame. When they reach the ideal place, and then after, and then just oh. keep shooting till the. the and then, uh, then how do you review your photos? And there they are. What a what a photo! Oh, uh, so you just use the you just use the default. I just use the default when I'm out in the street. Oh, okay. Um, when I post, I mean when I process, I use Hipstamatic. Okay. Why do you use Hipstamatic? Uh, I just started with Hipstamatic. It's what I started shooting with when yeah. I shot. Uh huh. Uh, so give us an example how you might process a photo. Sure. Let's take a photo. Take this one. This this was last night. So okay, you see, last cool. I went through and just highlighted the the ones the takes I liked. Uh huh. What so, uh what filter do you use? 
my standard. This is my standard black and white. What's it called? Uh, just the Jane lens with the uh, Black Keys XF with the uh, Triple Crown Flash. Okay. But if we want to do it in color, yeah. I've been using less and less of these. I'll take the filter and the frame off, and I'll just use one flash, which is the Apollo flash, and there you go. Oh, cool. And Save then, ah. and then um, it oh, saves nice. the original as well, so I have oh, the cool. original to play with. Um, and um, there it is. Oh, nice. Open up your uh, Instagrams. Sure. So, what is your what is your handle on the grams? I am Shell Sorkin. Shell. So how do you how do you spell that? S H E L S E R K I N. S H E L S E R K I N. What does yep. that mean? Uh, it's morning. My name. Hi, morning guys. Good morning. Uh, Sheldon, my first name. Sirkin's my last name. And then, um, what are some of your off? Uh, or wait, scroll up. Scroll up, yeah. So, um, why are you hashtag awful bliss? It's a personal hashtag. It's a song from by my the band that I obsess about the most. They're from Ohio. What are they called? Guided by Voices. Guided by Voices. Yeah, it's also the name of my blog. Oh, shellcircan.com. And then um, open up your website. Sure. So what do you like to do on your blog? So I just started, well, I post every day on Instagram, Flickr, and uh -huh. on uh, Tumblr. That's my blog. But I just yeah. started the website a few months ago. Cool. And I've gotten a lot of, there it is. Ooh, nice. What is the benefit the, for you having a blog versus having um, just your Instagram? It, it more permanently highlights the, the photos I'm most proud of. Oh, cool, yeah. So it acts more like a portfolio. Oh, ah, well, I like it how it automatically yeah. slides. Because I'm, I'm, I'm too lazy not to just <laughs> even swipe. No, this is easy. This, uh, use Smug Mug. Oh, Smug Mug. Yeah, yeah. No, I know the guys at Smug Mug. They, they, they're yeah. really great. So I updated about one, I've been updating about once a month, just uh, swapping out photos for the, for the splash page and then adding to the uh, two categories. The two categories I have right now are color, black and white. It's really kind of basic. Oh, okay. Right now. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'll definitely make sure to highlight some of uh, what I think my favorite photos of yours are. Oh, thanks, Eric. Um, thanks. So if you started a street photography all over again, yeah. what advice would you give yourself? What advice would I give myself? Yep. If I started all over again, I would, um, don't be afraid to take bad photos. I took a lot of bad photos and I posted a lot of bad photos on Flickr. Still haven't taken them down because, uh, I, you know, we were talking yesterday, Eric, and you're, you were absolutely right. It's, it's great to see how someone evolves, how someone grows and develops as a photographer. But um, it's really, don't, yeah, it's, don't be afraid to take bad photos. If you see a moment, but you're not in an ideal position that you think you can get the best picture in, take it anyway. What's, nice. your, what's your best advice? That's actually a really good advice. Oh, My best advice is shoot what you're afraid of. Shoot what you're afraid of. Because often what you're afraid of is actually what you really want to photograph, but yeah. you're just too afraid to shoot it. Yeah. Yeah, that's part of uh, what I'm going to be talking about yesterday is the zone as not being not just a, a state of state of mind or a state of being where you're you know infallible, indestructible, getting every shot. But really knowing what your strengths are, shooting to your strengths, but then also knowing what your risk, when to take a risk. So when do you know when to take a risk? When you can't deny that you need that shot. To me, that's when that's when that's when you know. I like that. You need the shot. You need the shot. You need the shot. All right, Shell. I'll link to uh, your stuff. Okay. It's my honor. Thank you. Chat more soon. Thanks a lot, Eric. All right. All Bye, right. YouTube's. Bye, guys.